Oh, oh. And we are back. And now it will be time for round three of today's mid season showdown. Both players at two and zero, mm. and looking to go to three and zero, and with a very strong shot making top card at that point. Indeed, and it's been a long time since we've seen Farman do so well in the tournament. Still early days yet, mm. but yeah, Farman hasn't been in this position for a while. Sitting at two and zero, and gonna be playing against Brian So. Yeah, I I'm not too sure about Brian So, but Farman to me is the king of memes. So I, I mean, I'm not too. I'm not saying that his team is full of memes, and I think that he's having success with a rather standard team, if I'm not wrong, if I remember his team correctly. But yeah, that's unusual. It's usually a joy to watch Farman play because he usually has something up his sleeve. Um, even if it's a standard team, nonetheless, I think we'll, this will be a match, a series of matches that we'll enjoy. That's kind of been Farman's weakness of late for for a long time since he. Uh, gentle reminder that Farman is still the reigning regional champion of Singapore <laughs> and it's been since then that Farman has largely played very standard and hasn't really seen the same success mm, indeed well, well he's going to be bringing a relatively standard looking team looks it looks pretty much close to one of the teams that did finish the top 16 in Oceania I believe talented mm -hmm. by a Japanese player it's going to be Tapu Koko Landerus Darian Charizard Venusaur Cresselia and the Snorlax and unless my eyes deceive me, Brian is running the exact rather same team here as Farm. So I am not sure this is this is whether it's an error, but yeah. So Coco, Charizard, Snorlax, Landorus, Crest, and Venusaur. So it looks like both players have chosen to draw inspiration from the same Japanese team report and will be facing each other in this round three matchup. Yeah, and well I it seems it's Farm, I'm gonna say that the Venusaur is the Mega Venusaur and Unlikely the Charizard. Though. Uh, okay, then it's Based a Mega Charizard X. Has to be, right? Even more unlikely. <laughs> nah. Oh. I'm expecting it to be very similar to what we saw from that team in Sydney. Mm. With... What was the Venusaur? I actually cannot remember. Grass Pledge? Or Solar, no, or it was Solar Pledge. Beam, I think. That was the one. No, it's leaf, Grassium Leaf Storm, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, a bit um, disappointing, but... Nonetheless, um, two z both players here two zero, so looking to continue is their undefeated streak. gonna lead off here. I believe it is the Scarf Landorus, which will be in a good position against the Tapu Koko. Though in a dangerous position because it is threatened by the Ice Beam from Brian's Cresselia. Mm. And if you do, if you are choice lock and you go for the earthquake, and the Coco protects and switches out, you are entirely vulnerable to the Ice Beam. Yes. Which is why most Landorus do, in fact, just go for the easy turn one U turn into Cresselia. If it is the D D D D scarf variant, it's an interesting training from Faman. Never quite given up his fascination yeah. for the character of Magumin. It looks like who? No, that's Bian is Brian. What yeah, yeah. What's, what's Farm's username? Explosion. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. at least it's not Chun Chun Maru. Uh, it's <laughs> gonna be helping Ken coming out. Ooh, helping Ken earthquake right off the bat. No, it's gonna be helping Ken U turn. It's interesting choice just to get damage on the Cresselia, but. A good amount of damage. That's a lot of and damage. And especially since he did probably expected the Coco to either protect or switch out. So mm. he does catch an easy damage onto Brian's own Cresselia. And his own Cresselia didn't really have anything else he could do in that position. Since he didn't he didn't want to set up Trick Room with the Snorlax coming in. Yeah, it's sort of a mind game here. Is that Snorlax coming in as well? Yeah, it is. It's also a mind game as well because um, if Crest maybe didn't go for the Trick Room because expecting Farm's Crest to reverse the Trick Room. But well, Trick Room is set up here and both Snorlaxes I think will be happy for that. Uh, Farm does come out ahead in terms of damage. Um, Cresselia is at 50%. Yeah, and doesn't have any re recovery apart from its slightly 50% pinch berry. Mm. Which could and be rather easy to avoid at this point. And we do expect both Snorlaxes to be a speed tying at minimum speed, so... Question is um, whether players... Because I do believe Curse is now allowed in tournaments, so whether players will, will favour that move or instead run Belly Drum. I do believe this fast setup. original... Pilot did use Belly Drum. Ooh, Cressella goes for the ally switch here. Expecting Farman to not go for the go for the attack and not to set up. But well he does go for the belly drum. So Brian does get his setup and his Snorlax does move first. Though we do suspect it is a speed tie. Yes. As Farman Snorlax probably going for his own belly drum, I think. And it's gonna be another speed tie next turn. Ally switch is gonna make things difficult here to predict as you as you your opinion on this is on this move is that Brings up too many 50-50s. It's not, it's not a move that's really in control of either player, I feel. Mm. As Farman's own Cresselia goes for the Trick Room. So maybe Farman confident that his Snorlax is faster than Brian's Snorlax. Mm. And we did see his Snorlax move second last th this turn. Mm. 
also now if, if that is the case then Brian is in a bit of a pickle Me, does he want the ally switch to dodge the the, the attack incoming to the Solus or does he want to set up trick room and, and again, given the ally switch is priority does, even if you do go for ally switch mm. you still lose a mon guaranteed well can Brian return the favor in kind though can he take out the as we do see Farman's Cressella go for the IC win here. Hmm. Brian's Cressella not acting. Maybe it's uh, going to, or maybe we didn't go for a switch for trick room. So yeah. Farman's Snorlax is going to be able to move first. No, it's going to be a speed tie after all. And Double Edge will take out Farm. Oh, take out Cressella. Are we, are we going to see both players trade their Snorlax? Uh, oh, actually, no. Farman didn't lose his Snorlax. Yeah. If he goes for the damage on the, the return Snorlax. here, into the Snorlax. Oh, that is huge. Gonna get the KO. And Farman's going to have his booster Snorlax on the field against Brian's trick room. <laughs> that is not the play you're expecting. And that play doesn't make sense as well because if you're expecting the trick room to be reversed, then why did you why did you target down the opposing Cresselia? It's an interesting decision to go for the trick room. Unless he thought Farman had ally switch as well. But if you ally switch if, if Cre Farman's Cresselia is ally switching, it's not trick rooming. Which makes Brian's now, oh, choice that's, of that's trick room. If you expect Farman to ally switch, then he ally switches, you kill Farman oh, Snorlax after the ally switch and then, then you, you set, set up, up for your own Snorlax. I see, I see. Oh, but yeah. Farman just going for a straight play and again, ally switch just does no one any favours. Mm. We do, we see that ally switch ended up playing mind games with Brian himself. <laughs> Whereas um, Farman going for the straight forward play of just killing the Snorlax. And we do and, and we do see it was a speed tie after all. Hmm. Indeed. We see Charizard Y Mega evolving here. Does have the overheat which is his strongest option I guess. I think helping him over he could do it against the Snorlax. But Snorlax will act first under this trick room. So yeah, but again, you have to hope that Farman targets the Cresselia perhaps. As Return comes out into the Cresselia? Nah, oh, into, into the, the Charizard. Charizard. And yeah, it looks like it's going to be a swift game one after the Snorlax sets up. Yeah, Farman playing very straight. And Cresselia does avoid the Rock Slide and re re reverses the trick room. Yeah, it's so Brian could have gone for a protect trick room there. Hmm. But again, it was the obvious play. But Farman just played it straight again. Yes. So Brian is just playing mind games with himself <laughs> at this point. <laughs> two down to his last two Pokemon here. Farman just just press explosion on the uh, Landorus. You know, fulfill your 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 name, uh, your trainer's name. Is that going for the ally switch here, hoping in the last dip attempt to and save the Coco. He's a Gigavolt crit, I think. Hmm. Rock Slide will come out, so it is the Scarf Landorus. Um, something avoided. Oh, the Coco does avoid. So, so no, no flinch, flinch. here. Yeah. As Thunderbolt just gonna come up with Thunderbolt, so no Giga will have it. That's not a lot of damage. That is really poor damage. But he does get the ally switch off and gets the KO onto his Cressalia instead. And mm. now Giga can KO the Snorlax. Oh, not when the electric terrain has just run out. <laughs> so, well, a bit unfortunate timing there. Could have, could have just gone in straight. straight At this off. point, Farman should switch <laughs> Landorus out to reset the reset attack. his choice attack. But no, just go stay in. A bit of a dangerous game. And Gearbook Havoc does kills. Well, he does have one more Pokemon at the back to but play around with. Just go for Thunderbolt again. Is that indicative of perhaps a Spex? It's gonna be the return, and it's gonna be a KO. Hmm. Brian not really having an answer at the end, but you have to figure that the game was lost by turn two, turn mm, three even. Yeah, that that tends to happen when you lose your plus six Snorlax and your opponent doesn't. And um, I mean. And he even won the speed tie. Yeah, there, there were there were some I think avenues which Brian could he won both maybe won both speed ties. Yeah, he did. There are some avenues maybe Brian could have wormed his way out, but the ally switch, a bit, really, really, I I don't see the value of it in in this match so far. It hasn't directed any attacks that you don't want to avoid, and even then, Cresselia's bot also wasn't really in question. Uh, was wasn't wasn't really put to good use. Once we just saw helping hand Newton that did fifty percent already. And that was as long as can and as long as he could get chip damage on without activating Celeste Berry, mm. Snorlax would just finish the job. Yeah, and I think this this is gonna be the nature the theme of this uh, series of games is who can set up and preserve their Snorlax should be able to come out on top. I mean there are of course um avenues which um both players can play around with, for example if they protect into um Snorlax's attacks, they are single target attacks, so they can be Worked around with just not with allies, which I I don't really agree. A uh, more solid play would be to protect and um he does have Charizard Y, so as you mentioned, something like a helping hand overheat might kill Snorlax. Yep. 
Yeah, especially in, in Sun and or the Gigavo Havoc, which uh, the Coco didn't reveal at all. Gigavo, the first the game. Gigavo Havoc does not get a clean uh, does not get a clean KO though. Hmm. Thunderbolt followed by Gigavo Havoc, sure. But other than that, again Helping Hand. I think Helping Hand would do the defense, but we don't know whether it's Cresselia carries Helping Hand. We've seen the Ally Switch, we've seen the Trick Room. Actually, that's all we saw. Yeah, no no attacking moves, no Ice Beam, no Psychic, no nothing. And we do see Landorus Venusaur coming out Ooh, from... Farman hoping to catch a Charizard! Yeah. <laughs> oh, he does! But that doesn't, he has to Mega to get the Sun. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't get the Chlorophyll immediately. That's the flaw in his plan there. Hmm. And... Although you could argue Venusaur doesn't really like facing Charizard Boy because of his weakness to fire, um, Landorus does threaten with Rock Slide, yes. and we did see Scarf but of he has been intimidated. Mm. He could survive. He could survive. Um, so Farman, I think a bit of a gambit there may not entirely pay off. Yeah, not unless his Mega, uh, his Venusaur Mega evolves and might survives with Thick Fat. Might have been better off conserving the Venusaur at the back. One Sun go, one Sun did go up for Brian. Now Brian is not incentivized to set up Sun at all. We do see yep. that switching out goes. Oh, his own <laughs> Venusaur. Okay, another mirror match. Uh, Brian's is shiny. Having an interesting game plan to combat the mirror team. <laughs> Brian locks itself into Rock Slide. Intimidated, the best move in the game, damage. Matthew. Best move in the game. But Brian doesn't flinch, gets his U-turn off. And we'll see what farm decides to go for Probably here. the fourth one. I don't expect Charizard to come back in to a choice lock Rock Slide. <laughs> oh. Never but he does really go for Charizard. I never really know. Yeah. I think he's... he's a Sludge Bomb comes out into the... What was the Charizard, the Charizard slot? Oh, that's a lot of damage. You are Ooh, very right. frail. No, no, no. It's, it's only a neutral hit. Yeah, because of... Poison does grass resist poison, but grass is weak to poison. Hmm. I mean, I guess, if you look at the, the HP stats of both of the Venusaur, it's 1, 5, 6, so it's really fully four, invested into... That's 4 HP, yeah. I, into, into special attack. And you suspect that Brian's own Venusaur is similarly invested. Uh, not much into bulk. Which can sort of explain why Del's, the Venusaur took so much damage. It's Ooh. gonna mega evolve. Hmm. So not afraid of the minus one rock slide. I don't think kicks in immediately because mm. Sun goes up this turn, which means the turn order has already been determined. Yes. So Lander is still gonna go first. Still gonna have a chance to flinch, and I think might no. I don't think Venusaur gets killed. Yeah, but Venusaur gonna protect itself just in case. Get yeah, waiting for turn. the yeah. Does someone protect his own Venusaur? No, just goes for rock slide, and his Venusaur is gonna leave itself open to Charizard. He's banking on a flinch. That looks to be the case. And he does get it. Wow. Venusaur goes for the Sun Drone, kills the Charizard as well. Ooh, Doesn't KO. Not quite. Charizard special defense, much better than Venusaur's. Hmm. At this range though, another Rock Slide should be able to pick off. Now it's gonna come down to Venusaur Speed Die. Mm. Not really though. I think Farman would be willing to trade his uh, Who's Venusaur. Venusaur is that? That's Farman's, I believe. No, I think that's that's Brian's. Yeah, oh, it yeah, is. Brian's. Yeah, shiny, shiny Venusaur. Venusaur. So gonna be the Bloom Doom to KO Landorus. Mm. At this point though, Coming I off think the Leaf Storm, so 190 base damage, Doom Doom. I think Farman just trades. And he easy gets rid KO of Charizard. Onto uh, Landorus. And yeah, Farman just probably gonna direct the tank into Charizard. Well, he could just KO whatever, because both of Brian's Pokemon are in range. Mm -hmm. Of the Sludge Bomb. Just go for Sludge Bomb, put his pick off, just go for Charizard. Yeah, I, I think Farm is. Farm has lost the speed tie, but it doesn't really matter in this case, I think. Yeah, he didn't it will matter Venusaur. in the second turn, in, so in when the Venusaurs probably go for each other. Uh, well, they might not, depending on the partner. Brian cannot get the KO. Oh, hey there. As Mama brings in his own Charizard, as and Bright then brings in Cresselia. I'm not too sure about the damage calculations, but maybe a Broom Broom should kill the Cresselia no, quite easily. He would KO the Cresselia. Hmm. I think Brian's best choice here for Venusaur. But at the same time, the Cresselia is going to... Oh, but then Broom Broom probably activates Barry, which is not something... Actually, I'm not sure whether it activates Barry. I don't think Farman wants it to activate Barry. <laughs> because that will allow the Charizard to pick it off afterwards. Yeah, and I think oh, Brian's only form of control here will be the Venusaur Sleep Powder, which can miss. So I think he has to go for it onto Charizard. Yeah. So Farman might just go for his own Sleep Powder onto Cresselia. So interesting, both players in the second game opting not to bring their Snorlaxes, but rather bring in their Fast yeah, Mode with their Charizard Venusaur. Sleep Powder does connect hmm. with Farman's Charizard. Does Farman go for his own Sleep Powder? Or does he opt to KO the Venusaur? Ooh, let's go for the Bloom Doom into the Crystallia. I think that's a berry. Hmm. I do suspect that's a berry. And if if Crystallia did set up Trick Room, then 
both Venusaurs will be the slowest thing on the field. And Charizard will have a chance to wake up immediately next turn. Hmm. So that's going to be the Bloom Doom. Again, 190 base damage off Lee Storm. Uh, Ooh, not even Berry. Not even half. Goodness gracious, wow. Cresselia. As Cresselia goes for the Icy win. Okay, so now Brian's Venusaur will always move first. But still not threatening any sort of damage. We, d we did see the Venusaur damage onto Venusaur previously. Mm. And Farmer's Venusaur is still not quite at that range. And Venusaur can't be put to sleep as well, since it is a grass type. So the and since thanks to Chlorophyll, Venusaur is still not threatened by the Cresselia in terms of speed. Minus one not going to be enough. Ooh, a helping hand Ooh, helping slide from will do it. So Farman's going to need to wake up this turn. Let's go down to help against Sludge Bomb. Not Ooh, quite. <laughs> do it. And the return Sludge Bomb here. Brian's Venusaur goes down. Wow, wow, wow. Charizard still, still asleep, but in this case, Farm has the speed advantage. Yeah, Brian will have to bring back his own Landorus, which I, I you su suspect if it's Scarf, would do a number on, uh, which will pick up two easy KOs here, though. So I wouldn't really... And especially since Farman has lost his own Intimidate. Yeah, and oh, Farman has blown his Z-move as, as well in this case, so might not be able to kill the Landorus. Does Venusaur? Venusaur at plus one after the Icy win. Yeah, it's probably slower than Landorus now. He could reset the speed, but I think Sun might expire before that. Hmm. <coughs> Indeed. And Farman lost his Intimidate. Yeah, um, lost his Landorus as well. To the Bloom Doom. So we'll see the speed type. Charizard. He's going choose to save his Charizard. Mm. And Snorlax does come in. Take a rock slide. As Venusaur protects itself. Stalling out Sun turns. <laughs> U-turn into the Venusaur? Okay. So and locking himself with goes for the Icy Wind. But it's, it's the, more the more important role there was of course the damage onto Venusaur. Mm. Since you expect that even if you even the Charizard stays in, there's still a chance it stays asleep. Oh, you suspect after two turns. That's a 50-50. Yeah. Well, Venusaur does switch out for Charizard. Question is whether Brian is locked into his move. I don't think so. Does get his stun back up. So mm. now Venusaur will outspeed Landorus. And th they re did reset the speed as well. So there's that. To see an ally switch. So Landorus going to swap places with Cresselia here. Question is, does he go for the rock slide? No, goes for the U-turn. He's locked into U-turn. That's a really bad move to lock yourself into. Especially if you, you really want the rock slide. Oh, he can't switch, kill. goodness. I didn't realize. Yeah, that's why I was wondering why he picked Yuta because I was suspecting that he was an ally, a uh, Salt Vest, or maybe a Tectonic. But if he's Scarf, then, well, good times for farm here. Damage is not going to come out fast enough. And he, yeah, he's free enough to set off a belly drum. It is. Oh. Is it Scarf? If it is Scarf, then Brian has made a, a wrong choice. M maybe he timed out and U turn was the first move that he picked into. Perhaps. Perhaps. Mm. Charizard still asleep. Goes to try to go for protect. Ooh, nah, it is, is the rock tomb. Mess. It's gonna be rock tomb. That's gonna be the KO. Yeah, so not the questionable decision mm, after okay. all. It is the assault vest. But Farmer Snorlax is just ready to clean uh, clean up. Doesn't even have to go for Cresselia. I can just easily smack that. Yeah, Landorus is gonna go down. So speed that means nothing to Snorlax at this point. Here comes the return into the Landorus, and that's gonna be the game and the set for Farman. Mm. He needed, I think, to pray for some power critical hit. I think. From the Landorus? Ah, but he was always risking the Charizard waking up. And we did see the Charizard was faster than uh, uh, Landorus at the end there. Mm, with all true. the speed being reset. But again, there's still a chance and it's better than what he had. Which was zero at that point. Since you leave the Snorlax open and there was nothing you could do about the Snorlax. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that both players chose to bring a, a, almost the same three Pokemon. But their choices really differed in, in terms of... Uh, they, they in terms of the mindset on how they approach the game. Farm decided to bring Snorlax in response in case Brian decided to offer a trick remote, so at least he wouldn't be uh, so lost behind. Whereas Brian opted to bring Cresselia, which is more, I would say, a more risky approach because you want to stop the trick room from being set up on your opponent's side by reversing the trick room with your own Cresselia. So yeah, Cresselia just doing nothing for Brian through two games. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the... Of all the things to keep from game one, why does Cresselia... I think that's one of the disadvantages of Cresselia. As we did see, the bulk is really superb. They managed to take a Doom Bl uh, Bloom Doom or Doom Bloom at like 50%. But it's in return, his damage output is not, it's not good. 
uh, it does offer a lot of control. We did see the helping hand come out from the Cressel as well. Unfortunately, not quite enough to KO um, Farm's own Venusaur. And when you look at the four he brought the game to, the Charizard, Venusaur, Landorus, mm. and Cresselia. Yes. How would he plan to take out Snorlax? Um, good question. I would say it's a combination of um, Charizard and Venusaur. Though and again, he definitely expected the Helping Hand Star Strong to pick up the KO. Mm. And that did turn the game. I, I guess you you can't count out, you can't discount uh, Venusaur Sleep Powder. You can use that, I think, if it lands. It is a sufficient enough measure to um, s control the Snorlax and then slowly chip away at it while making sure that it doesn't recycle yeah, to recover itself. Yeah, because he does have Landorus as outvested. Mm. So probably had knockoff as well. Mm, so true. He had he had, he could handle it like he had answers by committee. Everything had something to handle the, the Snorlax with, but he definitely needed that one turn in which the Venusaur didn't go down. Yeah, he, I think both of them were surprised. We saw how much Farmer's Venusaur did to his mm. own Venusaur without a helping hand, and then we saw the damage come back with a helping hand, and he didn't KO Farmer's Venusaur. Yeah, Just definitely. Damage rolls back and forth. Ah, uh. Farmer secretly EV his Venusaur, especially defensively, uh. without telling Brian. Um. Well, we could argue that maybe farm the, all the speed ties weren't really speed ties in that case. Maybe farm took away some from his speed, which is why uh, Brian's own Venusaur kept uh, managed our speed. That's true. But then again, uh, didn't really matter because um, Brian's own Cresselia kept using icy wind, so kept giving him the speed advantage without the trick room. But so that's, that's all that. it did. Again, that's all it could offer his S team. Sadly, yes. I mean, Cresselia again, Alexis did nothing. <laughs> Cresselia Once has again, Cresselia has merits. Yeah, let's he Alex switch on the mm. turn with a Snorlax got a free belly drum. Like, what <laughs> did you accomplish? I I suppose you can't really do much. Um, you, you look at it, you see Trick Room, you see Ally switch, you see Icy Wind, you see Helping Hand. That's that's the full extent of your abilities. You you can't really do much. You really bang on your partner to carry the weight. And with Helping Hand, usually, and Venusaur's Crawfield, you tend to uh, have that speed advantage and that power to take out whatever you. You can accept well for farm's own Venusaur, which proved to be quite crucial. Because as you mentioned, um, by committee, Brian's own team has the tools to deal with the Snorlax that might come out in the end game. It was just that farm's own uh, farm's own tree managed to sort of dismantle Brian's team uh, to push the team into disarray enough for Snorlax to come in and clean up. Yes, mm. he was even able to lose his lenders without much of a drawback in the end in game game two. Mm, yes, and I, I don't know why um Brian kept pressing U-turn in, in, in the like first. He didn't want to miss. Yeah. And all, all of Landorus' other attacks can miss. Uh, he does have Earthquake. Earthquake. What was his partner at the point? Cresselia. Cresselia. Yeah, actually. I mean, you, you, yeah, you're immune. You don't really damage the Charizard, but you kill the Venusaur at least. Because all you want is damage on the Venusaur. Mm. So, yeah. Strange decision there. I mean, what's Rock Tomb's accuracy? 95. Ha <laughs> ha Okay. Yeah, it still can miss. That's the problem. But we did see it pick up a very clean kill on the Charizard Y. So it was chipped. Mm. But it, it kills Charizard Y without Intimidate. So mm. The other interesting point is that we saw both Snorlax opt for different attacks. Oh, Double H double yeah, from Brian. Which is interesting because Double H you tend to see on the Curse variants. Mm. Which makes you wonder actually, did was Brian running the Double H Earthquake variant? And in that case, if he was afraid of Ally Switch, would a plus 6 Earthquake have been enough to kill? Farmer's Snorlax? Mm, as in Brian's Snorlax has his has Earthquake? I suspect, because most of the Snorlax that carry like, Double Edge tend mm. to carry Earthquake as coverage. Well so you do wonder, if he, if he had Earthquake and he was worried about Ally Switch, maybe go for the Earthquake. Mm. But plus 6 Earthquake I think might not be enough for Snorlax still. Because it's not boosted by same type attack bonus. Yeah, well... There's that and I it's think it's... It really is hard to see what Brian's game plan was in both games. Could you really see a clear pattern to what he was trying to do? Game one, game one, there was a distinct clear pattern. It was the same as Farman's. It was just in terms of execution, um, the ally switch didn't, the ally switch play didn't work so well, and Farman punished him very heavily uh, with Snorlax. No pun intended. But uh, in game two, the approach, yeah, as I mentioned, the the difference br between bringing Snorlax and Cresselia is is the two players' different approach to how they see how they are able to handle Trick Room. Farm just says, oh, okay, if you set up Trick Room, I'll just bring my own Snorlax to take advantage of the Trick Room. Whereas Brian's approach sleep is, powder. if if you bring Trick Room, I'm going to bring my own Cresselia to reverse the Trick Room. Or Sleep Powder the Trick Room. Uh. Yeah, so um, definitely I think Farm's approach was more aggressive. Um, 
And yeah, considering if Sleep Powder hits the Snorlax, then Brian would be able to more effectively control the game. But in terms of trading Pokemon, the favor went in Farman. I mean, you could you could say uh, damage rolls and all that, but at the end, the result was that Farman came out on top. And because Brian opted to bring in Cresselia, which is a more passive control type Pokemon, he didn't have the m means to come back from that. He needed to at least be on the even or uh, on the, he needs to be ahead of Farman or at the very least on the even playing field, not playing from behind. Yeah, Cresselia does it's not a Pokemon that can really help you recover mm. from a bad position. Yeah. And yeah, it really came down to I suppose both players know it better than us since we don't really know the team. Yes. But the start from rolls just both players know what it was. Maybe it was low roll or high roll. No one really knows other than them. Uh, I ju but I just in the end, it did swing Farman's way. I just disappointed Farman didn't press explosion on Landorus. Probably doesn't carry it. <sighs> it's not a format where Scarf Landorus can afford to run explosion. Uh, Scarf Landorus has trouble ha picking four moves to begin with. Uh, Earthquake, Rock Slide, U turn, I mean the Super name Power, trainer Knock name. Off. It fits, it fits the trainer name, Farman. Uh, he sometimes doesn't have self destruct either. Oh, oh right, that is an option. Plastic self destruct actually should. Wait, is self destruct an egg move or? It's an egg move, yes. Mm. See, some, something to consider. When your berry is gone, no way of recovery, you just want to do yeah, a just last waste your, You just want to waste your belly drum. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, it's not belly drum, your, your last robes, you know, you can't survive the next turn, you just want to go out with a bang. I think that's fine. And if, again, it fits with Farman's trainer name. So, um, maybe these players actually built this team themselves. I don't think it's coincidence that both of them brought the same team. You have to imagine they was inspired by that team that did well in Sydney. And to note, both of them are two zero, so they're doing well with this team uh, so far in this tournament, at, at least. And we did see, yeah, both are very similar teams. Both very similar in the sense that they both definitely draw from the team that did well in Sydney. Mm. To the Gracian Leaf Storm Venusaur. I mean... Very again a bit too much of a dependence on sleep powder for my liking, um, but a strong one nonetheless. But it's bulk. But farmer's bulk came through for him. Why is Brian's Venusaur just took way too much damage from the start? But looking form. at the HP, I don't think farmer invested in bulk. Oh wait, farmer's Venusaur took a rock slide, didn't it? Um. Hey, no, sorry, Brian's Venusaur took a rock slide and then the sludge bomb. A sludge bomb. It was rock slide and then sludge bomb, wasn't it? Don't remember oh, the no, I think he just U-turned out. I don't remember the rock slide. I think the rock slide missed. Mm. So it was just purely slash from the slash bomb. bomb. Yes. Yeah. So maybe it just allowed Brian to a false sense of complacency. Uh, the helping hand slash bomb was definitely KO, it didn't. And that really was the game because he lost his Venusaur in response. And Farman still had his Venusaur. It'd be hilarious if both these teams drew inspiration, but then at the last moment Farman said, hey, decided, hey, I, I don't I don't need so much speed. I'm just gonna drop some speed and maybe boost a bit. Yeah, special defense, you know. Maybe I can survive like a stuff like a Giga Vault have on electric terrain and oh, things you like are that. Survive that regardless. <laughs> As in survive it better, you know, make it a, a three hit KO instead of a two hit KO. Or th although I sup I suppose there is only he can one. Use it once. once. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. All okay. right, so kudos to Farman and Brian. So Farman mm. moves on with three and zero record, hoping to recreate past success. Hmm. Farman back to his glory days? Question mark. So, well, the the going looks good so far for Farman. I have to yeah, say. Yeah, one more win, he's in top card. Even if he loses out from here, he still has a chance with depending on resistance. Hmm. Whereas yeah. Brian's gonna have to do it the hard way. Gonna pick up. Needs to pick up two more wins in his mm. last two sets. I I don't think it's too difficult because. If you want to really look at the nature of the teams, they are really very hyper offensive. They put a lot of pressure on their opponent. Um, yeah, unless Cresselia is on the field. Well, there is still the pressure of Ally Switch. Uh, Although Brian, you know, pressures himself. Yeah, I think. kind kind of kind of um, showed the short the shortcomings of a Ally Switch play. But yeah, the the the, the Snorlax switch, the belly drum to don't threaten the setup. Don't use Ally Switch, guys. Don't use ally switch. And um, the Charizard Venusaur for immediate pressure on the first turn if it's so nah, nice. That's not the first turn. Venusaur, needs, Venusaur only really access pressure on the second turn. This Corfield's not up yet. Mm. Okay. Well, but the pressure is there. So, and, and depend depending on what the opponent leads, you know, maybe Venusaur could outspeed naturally. Stuff like uh, Fimi, for example. I think you can just threaten with the Bloom Bloom right off the bat. Mm. True. That's true. I don't think even Slash Bomb does a lot of damage. Oh yeah, so Fini can't really respond because Venusaur is poison and grass, resisting both of Fini's typical attacks. Fini can learn Ice Beam, although it's not no one commonly moved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, except the very rare Scarf variants. Yeah, just have option to KO Landorus. Mm. 
And even then, I think rock, uh, hyd Hydro Pump would be a better choice, I think. But Ice Beam is accurate. Ah, that is true. But locking yourself to Ice Beam is dubious, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. But, then, but then the Hydro Pump that misses, of course. Uh, I mean, I would believe I would just press Hydro Pump anyway. Is 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 the and that's what lost Melvin the open. To be fair, it wasn't he had from no other Fini. choice. Yeah, to be fair, it wasn't from Fini. So it's true that he also had no other choice. Mm. He only had that one button to get him the win, and it didn't come through for him. And Steve Powell is even more inaccurate than Hydro Pump. Seventy percent, thirty-five. Ah, well, worse, but not as bad, I suppose. Okay. It's interesting because again, you're really depending on Venusaur's existence too. Scare Fini away. Mm. But, and it, I suppose the good thing about Unistore is that you not only scare Fini away, you also scare Coco away thanks to Sludge Bomb. Mm. Because both of the terrains do stop your sleep powder. Oh, ooh. You're, you're, well, you're right. But at the same time, your opponent can just lead and switch out. And if you switch to a grass resist, Venusaur becomes very dead weight. Since mm. if the rain's still on the field, you can neither attack anything for a good damage nor control things to sleep. Yeah. And in terms of the rain control, what, what options? Brian was running the Coco. Both players running the Coco, which stops oh. your own sleep powder. Hmm. But again, you can argue that there are a lot of things, relevant things in the format right now that are, are not affected by terrain. Yeah, I guess if worst comes, yeah, I guess worst comes to worst, Brian could sleep powder. Oh, sleep powder, Landorus, Cresselia. Doesn't that take away Zapdos. some of? Doesn't take take away some of the utility of um, Brian bringing in his Venusaur to deal with the Snorlax because. If Faman had the Coco and Electric Terrain, then Venusaur... Yeah, I can't put the Snorlax to sleep. Hmm. But I guess he, if he wants to control the Crest, they'll be easy because Crest does have Levitate, not affected by the Electric Terrain. Yeah. Okay. And Charizard uh, is also, was, as we saw, unaffected by Terrain. And oh, we'll if it sleep. is X, then I think you're in pretty, a uh, pretty good position. Then you're going to win anyway, because Charizard X is a terrible Pokemon. I... <laughs> okay, um... We should be going on to round. We're waiting for round four. I believe some players are still. Now we'll be talking to Farman. Ooh, spicy. So we'll be right back with your boy Farman. Welcome back. We are here with the winner of um, round three, um, Faman. Congratulations on your win. So, uh, first of all, did you and Brian like discuss making this team? It's, it seems a bit of a coincidence that both of you brought the same team. No, like, I just I like the team, so I just take the team. So, as in, but you didn't consult with Brian on on whether to use this team at all. I think I actually saw we weren't using it, and Rain mm. suggested it. So, okay lah. Uh, give it a shot. All right. Um. Now, well, second question I just have is: Does your Landorus have explosion? I don't think it, it would. It would really suit your trainer name if it did. I mean, maybe the Snorlax could have explosion. <laughs> a self-destruct, yeah. Self-destruct would be a lot better, but nah, I don't think it would work. Something to consider. Okay, but on to the more serious stuff. Um, Going into a mirror match is very different from playing against other matchups. So what were your thoughts going into that series? I'm like, oh, Venusaur is probably a biggest threat. I mean, it can just sleep powder everything, and mm. it can, it's the fastest Pokemon like in the whole team. So yeah, that's a big threat. Mm. It can shut down my Trick Room, it can shut down anything. Yeah, and well, when your Venusaur survived with uh, 9 HP, were, were you considering? Were you hoping that it survived, or were you thought that oh, my Venusaur is a corner anyway at that point? Nah, I, I was thinking, nah, probably not. I shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> at least not, not until it actually happens. Okay, okay. And going into, as in, this 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 sort of game plan. Um, why would you say this team has made you more successful thus far in this tournament as compared to your other performances in other tournaments? What was the what was the difference? 
Is it playstyle? Is it the team? Or? I mean, it has two main modes, lah. So in the best of three, like, if you want to beat this kind of team, you have to deal with both the modes, like, mm. at the same time. And for most teams, it's kind of difficult because they don't really cover a lot of things. Like, especially if it's Chavez Ch Venusaur, I don't think it's too common. But Crescent Snorlax is very threatening, and yeah, I think for most teams, it's quite hard. Mm. Well, okay, and I find also find it interesting that both you and Brian sort of chose to lead the same Pokemon in both games 1 and 2. Of course, games 2, you brought your Snorlax and you brought Cresselia, which were different. So, um, going into, let's say for example, game 2, did you think, what, what was the biggest threat you thought was on Brian's team? It's, it's still the Venusaur. Just least. the Venusaur. I mean, it has the Z-move, so it's the most offensive, and Sleep Powder. Mm. Well, did you manage to put your Trizer Y to sleep as well? Okay, well, once again, congratulations on your win. Um, we'll hope to see more of you in top card, perhaps. So, um, with that, this is uh, your boy farm, signing out.